In this video, I'm going to discuss restriction enzymes, and these are types of molecular scissors in our cells. Um, so a restriction enzyme is a specific endonuclease uh, that can cut double-stranded DNA. In other words, it can cut both backbones of the DNA. And how they do this is by recognizing short sequences of DNA called recognition sequences. And then they'll cleave the DNA at or near that recognition sequence. So a typical recognition sequence uh, we see uh, discussed often is um, of the uh, restriction enzyme ECHO-R1. So ECHO-R1 will cut at a specific restriction sequence, uh, namely G-A-A-T-T-C. And what happens then is that there is the creation of what we call sticky ends on each side then of that cut. We'll then need a glue, a type of glue, of course, uh, in the form of a molecular enzyme, uh, namely ligase, then to glue these sticky ends together uh, when we join um, those DNA fragments together again. So if we know that this type of restriction enzyme cuts at a specific sequence, uh, we can find uh, useful applications for this in, in, in many instances. So just to also clarify something here, the bonds that are broken when these restriction enzymes like ECHO-R1 cut are the covalent uh, phosphodiester bonds uh, within the backbone and also the hydrogen bonds that are here in between the strands, between the uh, individual nucleotides, the A's, the T's, the C's and the G's. Now originally this type of enzyme, a restriction enzyme, was found in bacteria and they seem to use this as a type of natural defense mechanism to cut uh, foreign pieces of DNA. Uh, but now we of course have can clone these, they're commercially available. For example, if we want to do some experiments with ECHO R1 in the laboratory, we can order some ECHO R1 and then we can do experiments with those. Um, some of these restriction enzymes do leave blunt ends and others do staggered cuts. Um, in other words, they can do a single stranded cut with a five prime overhang or a three prime overhang. And this is what happens in the case of ECHO R1. It creates those sticky ends. So this would be a sticky end over here and then this would be a sticky end over here. And you can join these ends up by having that ligase enzyme. Uh, available to, to glue them back together. So it's important for molecular biologists to uh, create these unpaired sticky ends and then they can anneal or glue them back together with any complementary sequence in a different organism's um, DNA. Now today we know of more than 3,000 types of restriction enzymes. I do want to show you how we read a restriction map uh, let me open this one for us. This is an example of a restriction map for the plasmid PGEN101. Its total length is 20 KB. Uh, let me just remind you that a plasmid is a circular uh, piece of DNA, right? It is um, uh, often found in bacteria. And so, so uh, this um, plasmid, of course, uh, can differ in size, right? You can have a small plasmid, you can have larger plasmids, and we can measure their length uh, by measuring, you know, their uh, perimeter. How how long are they? Now, in the case of um, using a map as a guide, we're asking you uh, in this example to follow along and give the number of restriction fragments along with their associated lengths give the number of restriction fragments along with their associated links that would result from digesting this plasmid with the restriction enzymes ECHO R1, BAM HL, and also a combination of BAM HL. So what we'll have to do here is uh, uh, look at what KB length we'll end up with if we only have ECHO R1 present, 
what KB length we will end up, or maybe multiple lengths will end up if we have only BAM HL, and then uh, if what will we get if both of them are present there in the in the plasmid um, mixture. Okay, so let's do this. Let's look at Echo R1 first. I think I'll use some different colors here to highlight that for you so that you can see that better. So here, of course, is Echo R1. I'm going to use the purple to show you if we measure the length of the plasmid from here, the starting point all along uh, the perimeter, we see that we have a 8 kb plus 6 kb over there. Um, plus 2 kb over here, plus 4 kb over there. Uh, so that gives us a total of, um, you count with me, 20 kb, right? 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 8 is 20 kb. So we're literally looking at the uh, different um, uh, lengths of these uh, cuts uh, uh, created here. Uh, for us, you know, as a guide, but we're adding all of those together. So what I'm saying is the total circumference here of the plasmid, right, is what uh, is 20 kb. So if you only have echo R1 there, then what will happen, let's erase all of this, is that echo R1 will come in uh, over here and it will cut. And then if you could imagine it creates now um, a long piece, right? A long piece of this plasmid. So you're literally, you're opening up the circle and the total length, you know, of this uh, is uh, 20 kb. All right. So next up, let's look at uh, BAM HL. Uh, what do we see here that the BAM um, restriction enzyme can um, create? Well, we see that if we put it in there, we can have a, um, a 2 kb, we see that we can have a, a 6 kb, and we see that we can have also a, um, a 12 kb, right? So we're ignoring, so let me, let me draw a little line over this so that helps. So we're ignoring echo R1 here, and we're seeing that a BAM HL can, can be also a longer, you know, fragment here, so we could have a 12. So let's summarize that. We see a, a 2, we see a 6, and we see a 12. Okay, now what, what would happen if we add both of these restriction enzymes in the mix, both echo R1 plus the BAM restriction enzyme? So uh, let's clear all of this out. Uh, so that we see and so uh, we now have to consider that the echo r1 is present and it is going to um, cut here right and we need to consider that the bam is present and will cut there and there and there so now we end up with four fragments and those four fragments um the the smallest one is the two over here two kb and then we have a four on this side, and there is a six over there, KB. And lastly, we have a longer one, an eight KB. So it really is quite simple in how we read a, a plasmid and how it is cut by uh, restriction enzymes. Of course, you can uh, add many together and then it makes it a little bit more complicated. But I think the easiest way to start to look at this would be to look at what... Um, what does it look like if you have just the one um, restriction enzyme present and then you compare it with the other one? And then what does it look like if you consider all of them together?